amigos, é uma alegria, é uma satisfação estarmos iniciando essa que é a primeira live, é o primeiro broadcast é, que nós organizamos a partir daqui de São Paulo. Eu sou Vinícius Lumerts, secretário de Turismo do Governo do Estado de São Paulo. E a ideia é que nós estamos ligados no que está acontecendo no mundo por conta do momento que nós estamos passando. O momento que nós estamos passando exige uma busca de soluções de forma global, que nós tenhamos visões diferentes que possam auxiliar a nossa gestão. Aqui em São Paulo nós temos uma gestão concreta em cima do turismo, comandada pelo nosso governador João Dória e uma equipe de especialistas importantes, eh, dos melhores médicos, dos melhores técnicos da área, enfrentando essa pandemia. Mas também estamos olhando para o futuro, olhando para a retomada da economia, retomada pelo turismo. Nossos convidados, portanto, de, de, dessa primeira emissão, desse primeiro broadcast, é, são a doutora Dan Wang, que vai falar diretamente de Hong Kong, é, e eu vou fazer essa fala e esse, dar esses, esse boas-vindas a ela, que ela, ela que é, é doutora pela the Hong Kong Polytechnic University. E I would like to uh, welcome you, Dr. Wang. Can you hear us? I would like just to get a hello from you to see if we are connected. Hello, everyone. Yeah, so we are connected. I'm very happy to join this uh, broadcast to discuss together about the recovery of travel industry. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you, Dr. Wong. Dr. Wong is a specialist in IT, and IT is going to be very important when we go back uh, to the new normal. And uh, we also have a, a very, very uh, special pleasure to have the Secretary General of the UNWTO, uh, Mr. Zurab Pololikashvili, uh, a surname I've learned how to pronounce uh, after after uh, I, I could carefully say after we have become friends. And in that uh, position, I think he, he also accepted his invitation uh, in the name of Brazil, in the name of Sao Paulo, but also uh, uh, as for our friendship in the fight of tourism. Thank you very much for accepting our invitation, uh, dear friends Europe. Can you get Zurib sound back? Can we hear him? Do we get Zurab? Can you hear me? Yeah, now I can. Ah, uh, I bon dia, bon, bon dia, dear uh, Vinicius. Uh, it's a pleasure, it's an honor to be, and I always was and will be next to and close to Brazil and Brazilian people in this very hard time. First of all, I want to express my condolences to families uh, and uh, Brazilians who were affected uh, with this uh, virus. And, uh, you know, uh, and it's a pleasure to have this kind of trans connection from, from Hong Kong, Madrid and Brazil. Uh, this is what we learn from this virus and this crisis that we have to be united, we have to be together, and you really made it happen, and this is very right and exact uh, example how we will, how we have to stand uh, close to each other. Bom, eu, muito obrigado, Zura. Eu vou fazer uma breve introdução antes de começar a, a fazer interação de perguntas, só posicionando a todos nós aqui e também a cada um dos dois e aqueles que os seguem em vários lugares do mundo, eh, da situação do Brasil. O Brasil entrou um pouco mais tarde na pandemia, passa um momento difícil, eh, um momento que nós estamos combatendo em vários estados da federação e em São Paulo, onde nós estamos, aqui no uh, World Trade Center, eh, no centro, de São, no centro da cidade de São Paulo, nós hoje eh, temos um turismo parado como de resto no mundo inteiro, mas nesse momento 95% parado. E nós, no ano passado, aqui em São Paulo, nós tínhamos crescido, caro Zura e cara professora Wang, 5,4%. Nós baixamos impostos, aumentamos impostos de combustíveis, nós ativamos a economia, colocamos mais voos, fizemos mais comunicação, seguimos o receituário de reforçar o turismo. E isso aconteceu, houve esse crescimento importante, 
é, desse turismo, que São Paulo representa metade da, 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 da importância das empresas de turismo localizadas no Brasil, mais da metade estão aqui. E metade do, do fluxo turístico também acontece em São Paulo, que é um, um, um estado que tem 45 milhões de habitantes, o maior receptor e o maior emissor nacional e internacional. Então, nós, hoje, nós nos concentramos aqui em São Paulo e no Brasil eh, em enfrentar a crise, em sair dela, e hoje, na nossa discussão, também discutir como estarmos num lugar melhor depois. Eu tenho conversado com uh, Zurab, nós tivemos em Madrid no ano passado, sobre a necessidade de reformas. Então, aqui no Brasil, houve, houve a abertura do capital das companhias aéreas, houve a retirou-se os impostos de importação de equipamentos para parques temáticos, o atual governo do ministro Marcelo, nosso amigo, evoluiu também na direção de retirada de vistos. Então, é uma agenda contínua, não é uma agenda de um governo, é a agenda de todos nós. Eu faço essas observações para lhe situar dentro do conjunto do, das reformas que o Brasil precisa para estar daqui a dois, três anos, melhor do que estaria até se não houvesse essas reformas motivadas por tudo que nós estamos fazendo. And therefore, I go back to English and Dr. Wang uh, to the questioning. I'm going to address a few questions to Dr. Wang and uh, then later to our um, uh, main host, Dr. Zura Pololi Kashvili, who is the uh, Secretary General of UNWTO. Dr. Wang, uh, could you uh, somehow give us a, a short notice on what we could expect from IT applied to the new normal of tourism and what is happening in Asia that we can look at to imagine how we can go back faster to our normal lives and to back to our regional, international tourism. What are the lessons that IT can provide and what are the lessons that perhaps Asia can share uh, with uh, us in Brazil and Latin America? Yeah, well, I'm leaving Hong Kong um, and uh, of course China. And the China as the country first uh, was hit by the virus, COVID-19. Uh, and uh, the government gets the things controlled quickly. So China was the first country to get recovered, of course, including the, all the travel activities. So um, there are lots of things we can do, actually, because we know that um, now all the travel activities suspended around the world, particularly international travel, but uh, people still have the desire to travel. This is nature of the human beings. Uh, and uh, all the commercial activities uh, also will push the travel activities back to normal. Uh, the thing is uh, how we can get prepared, how we can proactively um, get things uh, ready to welcome travelers, to restore their confidence. Um, information technology actually play a very critical role in this kind of recovery because uh, based on my observation, in many airports in China, nowadays they are adopting um, the mobile, you know, mobile solutions and the virtual kiosk to replace those uh, self-service uh, standstill kiosk in the airport and to replace face-to-face -face interactions. People are encouraged to adopt uh, online checking solutions uh, before they get to the airport. In this case, you can avoid lines, avoid crowdedness in the airport, so to reduce the human contact. And also, for example, for those uh, food courts and restaurants in the airport, they also encourage people to order um, through their mini program inserted in the instant messenger ape app. So uh, basically in this way, you can also uh, reduce the human contact. So what I guess in the post COVID-19 travel context, People really care about hygiene and safety. And uh, people basically want a touchless, touchless travel experience, but at the same time, seamless. So information technology can offer lots of automation um, for the service job. So uh, yeah, this is our two case about the airports. 
Can you can so you give us a, a hint, a, a, a view, on the idea of uh, the technology ID or the digital ID? Is that something you're looking at? Uh, people having like a bracelet. I'm going to ask that question to Zurab later as well about the Canaries experience. But I'd like that to advance that with you. I mean, are we going to be digitalized travelers that we can go through uh, uh, because of uh, of a standard that people will be differentiated by in their traveling? Yeah, I think one of the uh, biggest challenges destinations face uh, is to assess each individual's risk in terms of uh, their possibility to spread the virus. So it's a uh, very important to um, get a kind of uh, uh, knowledge about this uh, person uh, in terms of its uh, health uh, credentials. So in China, uh, probably you've heard from the news, um, we are adopting Alipay health code. Basically, this is a QR code generated by the uh, system based on individual's um, uh, input. Okay, uh, you can, in, the input includes your travel history, uh, where you have been, uh, about your health record. So then it will generate different color of code. Uh, if it's green, you are allowed to enter into different kind of uh, um, travel uh, transportations, for example, airport, even subway, even shopping malls um, and theme parks. But if it's in other color, for example, yellow or red, uh, you are restricted to get into there. And this kind of uh, code application, QR code application in China, it helps uh, to tracing or to tracking uh, in case any confirmed case, uh, any confirmed, uh, case being identified. So uh, I, I think it's a digital identity. Uh, it will be become a new norm, so-called, a part of the new norm, uh, to get us to get to know people more. Of course, the privacy will come right, will be an issue. But the thing is that this is the reality we are facing, and uh, we have to learn how to handle um, it safely. That means. Meantime, um, the same time when we apply this kind of digital identity, meanwhile, we have to make sure the privacy issue being solved. Let me uh, uh, go to um, our second panelist, Dr. Zurab Bololikashvili, with that question, with the same, same exact question, which is how uh, a digital identity will be politically accepted and politi politically run uh, respecting individual, uh, individual, the individuality uh, of the Western democracies, which are in check now, uh, uh, especially with the uh, with the crisis we are going through. Uh, what uh, would uh, the UNWTO would say in its Secretary General position on Dr. Wang's uh, statement concerning the need of a uh, of a digital identity for uh, 1.4 billion travelers around the world, which we projected would be 1.8 billion travelings around the world in the years to come. Can we bring Dr. Zurab in? Uh, uh, Dr. Zurab, can I get you back? Uh, well, I'll, I'll reinstate the question. Okay, uh, we don't have the connection. Uh, I'll go back uh, to further comments by Dr. Wang, uh, and then we go back to Mr. Zurab as soon as we get him back from Madrid. Yeah. So we are in, back in Hong Kong then. Can you, can you further comment on, on, uh, on the subject of the uh, digital ID or 
do we, oh, oh, we yeah, also? Uh, okay. I think from the international community point of view, uh, it will be very uh, difficult to apply <laughs> because uh, uh, you know um, the digital ID, uh, um, digital ID, digital identity about the person. Um, if they travel internationally, um, you know, it has to be mutually recognizable by all the destinations. Right, so it requires lots of collaboration, data sharing, um, same times the consideration of the data security in the international community. So basically, I think the, 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 the implementation of the digital identity globally uh, will be gradually uh, realized. Uh, that means uh, probably regionally, uh, it, it gets uh, all the government to work together uh, and get collaborated on uh, to work on the solution in terms of the data sharing, in terms of uh, uh, or the, 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 the recognizable identity uh, or healthy, uh, verifiable healthy record uh, being shared. But uh, uh, for the long haul international community, I mean, the international market will be take time, it will take time to do that. For example, in Hong Kong, uh, now we have, because we know that uh, Hong Kong, Macau, and mainland China, uh, you they have border controls, right, uh, in these three places. So uh, basically, even now, uh, we haven't got the agreement uh, among all the government uh, in three places uh, to uh, acknowledge um, the digital identity. Uh, including the health record there. So I, I think it will take time for governments to work on different kind of protocols or uh, collaborative plans. Uh, but I think uh, this will be a very relevant initiative in the post-COVID-19 context. So you think it's going to be in, in, internal? Let's say, if you imagine uh, mainland China and then later on uh, Southeast Asia, and then by proximity, uh, slowly uh, amplifying. In a way, we exchange, yeah. we exchange the security of traveling uh, and health security for the idea of uh, uh, somehow um, uh, relinquishing the idea of one's privacy towards a system that will guarantee your privacy. I mean, it's a trust is an exchange of trust, like uh, in a way, like the banking system. Same same idea that you are depositing. I mean, you have to change your mind to think like uh, on your identity, like you're thinking on your on, on your bank account. That you're not afraid of being stolen. Uh, is there more or less what the uh, ethical point is? Exactly. I think when Mr. Azura. Uh, come back to join us. You you can further ask him. He just made a statement about the, the trust, right? Trust is very critical uh, in the post COVID nineteen um, uh, period. So uh, yeah, we like uh, people to, to in order to restore the consumers or travelers uh, confidence, uh, you have to make them trust you, uh, trust the travel industry, trust the aviation industry, the airports, the hotels, or provide a uh, very clean environment, uh, virus-free environment, or at least to help travelers get protected. So yeah, trust is very important, uh, particularly in this uh, um, international community. Uh, nowadays, uh, trust becomes very difficult, right? <laughs> Uh, well, since, since we don't have Zura back, uh, and that question will be addressed to him as well, I think it's importantly uh, addressed to him because uh, that's one of the main issues that may rise in the near future. But wouldn't that answer uh, be the dependable answer for globalization to carry on? I mean, uh, can we imagine a globalization without uh, this amount of IT and this amount of trust and this amount of new implementations, I mean, wouldn't that uh, a case for uh, uh, a big challenge for international commerce, for the influx of, of merchandises and the production of goods and services? Wouldn't, wouldn't we be in danger of uh, putting that in, at stake if we didn't have the answer that you're opposing, which is trust 
and go forward. Yeah, globalization, right? Um, this is the right, actually the level, the very high level of globalization before COVID-19 makes us feel more painful during this uh, uh, pandemic outbreak. Because thinking about it, if you uh, get back to 1918, uh, the pandemic, that first pandemic, um, you don't feel that pain, right, so much. It's because at that time, um, the countries or the world uh, is not so much connected. Uh, but nowadays, thinking about our business um, and thinking about our travel industry, uh, logistics, Globalization um, is is a, is a just just is a, our life, right? So people are already get used to they fly around to get business done, uh, to get uh, um, uh, their family at ten. So I think this kind of trend um, it's just like a train on the track. It cannot be really stopped, just 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 stopped because of this. But it will restarted in a new way. Uh, people get, as I said, uh, uh, the crisis comes with opportunities. Uh, people start to get reflected on the practice, the current practice, uh, and uh, then to restore uh, the routines, but the, with revisions, right? So we're talking about new norm. Uh, then we're talking about the transformation. So in the future, I think uh, the globalization and the travel and uh, uh, international collaboration uh, in terms of no matter business uh, uh, or community level will be or um, continue but different. Let me uh, uh, ask you a question which is very frequently formulated not only here but in, in the, uh, the whole international press concerning exactly what we are doing here. We are having a conference from Madrid. Now we have a problem with Zurab because we want him back uh, until he comes back. Uh, uh, just uh, you from Hong Kong and I'm here from Sao Paulo. Uh, and people uh, often reflect uh, of this, exactly what we are doing here, to mean in the future less traveling. Um, imagining that people would uh, have uh, a new... Uh, set of ideas of the need and necessity of the real travel uh, uh, as opposed to what will be uh, the new culture. Because it's very cultural that you, you, you believe that you need to meet someone personally, which we are uh, going through a, a, a disturbance right now. And then uh, I believe myself that we are going to go back traveling anyway, even for congresses and fairs, because we need face-to-face -face contact, but will, will there be an imbalance uh, on that? And I, I, I address that question directly to Zurab because we want him back if the Dr. Wong, yeah, Wong allows me. Apologize. Um, Thank you for... You, know, uh, you mentioned the uh, uh, ministers that we met in January and we wanted to organize a visit and big event. Uh, uh, it was planned in 1st of, and 2nd of April to support SMEs and the uh, convention center, which we wanted to show all the world that this was one of the biggest and most uh, attractive and important place for entrepreneurs, for innovation, which you already mentioned, and uh, another very big supporter and partner of UNWTO is uh, Hong Kong Polytechnical University. And we wanted really to, to make this project happened, and I'm sure that we will we will make it. But unfortunately, after the pandemic, we couldn't realize it. Uh, of course, now we are living in very weird situation, very very hard and difficult times. But tourism has a uh, power to recover very fast. And uh, what we are concentrate now to see two possibilities. One is the short term. Uh, and very different one by regions when we're talking about Americas. Americas, Americas uh, were affected just last one month, and I hope uh, with uh, 
experience we had in Europe, we can learn from each other and to support and to see and to help how we can survive these very hard times. Of course, the first message from our side is always to stay at home. That means to travel tomorrow. And uh, it worked in Europe, and I'm sure that it will work in Americas. And um, uh, then the another project we agreed, and Brazil was one of the uh, very active member of the crisis committee that we approached just yesterday, and we will send to all our member states uh, guidelines and recommendations, and uh, of course uh, priorities. The guidelines, and first of all, the most affected ones are private companies and people who are working in the sector. Millions of jobs are affected by pandemics. Millions of jobs are under risk. And um, our main message to governments is to support them, to support private companies in liquidity, first of all, and to support people. And many countries, they made the support and they supported 50, 60, 40 percent of uh, salaries uh, to subsidize, and it was really a very helpful and very important support for, for millions of people and millions of families who are living uh, from the sector. Where will be the first international events? Let's see. Uh, I'm sure that after starting the international flights, after starting, and since we will have international connectivities, we will become to normal life and we will start to travel. I'm very positive, we are very positive. And we, we really believe that we will survive these hard times and uh, everything will go to normality. Uh, we are, we, I asked two questions to Dr. Wang. Uh, that I expected uh, you comment. I think you've you already comment on, on on going back to the n okay. the new normal. Uh, we need um, we need fostering of of the economy uh, through uh, through uh, lending policies, but also through quantitative easing of monetary policies in different countries, which is happening, including here in Brazil. But it's also a question of time. Uh, and also uh, how long we will take uh, uh, and uh, we expect to take not as long as, as predicted. Um, but there were two questions we asked when we go out, out of this uh, situation, which is uh, the impact of technology of conferences like this in diminishing the possibility of people traveling for congresses and fairs. And I gave, you, I gave her my, my point of view. I think people are going to go back to traveling. Uh, but some people say not as much because we can do business and conduct business in this manner. And the second question is uh, a question I wanted to ask you previously concerning digital identity. And apparently there's an, uh, uh, there's a, uh, an experience going throughout uh, the UNWTO concerning traveling to the Canaries where there's an appliance of an, a, a, digital, okay. a digital identity. Uh, do you think that is going to be something that we are going to see in the future to um, facilitate traveling in various levels and domains? Honestly, uh, after this two or three months uh, experience, I totally agree with you that people maybe will travel uh, less because of cost-wise. Many companies, they saw that, and we, we also saw that there are many things we can do via these video conferences and virtual meetings, but it's boring. <laughs> it's really, uh, and tourism is a people to people uh, sector. And uh, uh, when we are talking about tourism, what people at the same time want to do tomorrow, the first thing is to travel. And uh, uh, I'm sure that that's why I'm very, uh, optimistic that tours will recover very fast and people will start travel and uh, we will have uh, increasing numbers of uh, uh, visitors all around the world. Uh, regarding uh, the second uh, question, uh, of course, uh, we 
starting from the very beginning, we started to analyze how people uh, can travel with less risk and with more safety, because safety is one of the most important topic and hit uh, uh, during the next uh, and f for future tourists. And these ID cards and uh, sanitary, sanitary passport, as they call, this is one of the tools uh, which can minimize the risk to export or import the virus from one destination to the other destination. Uh, again, I will be very honest, nobody can guarantee 100% of uh, safe travel today because uh, even we are talking about the times when we can't, and we can't travel from Madrid, I'm in Madrid and I can't travel tomorrow to Barcelona. Why? Because there are risks and uh, the crisis show us the first and the most important thing is health, most important thing are people and uh, that's why the manner, uh, the habit of tourists and the way to travel will change tomorrow, but the uh, most important uh, role will play, of course, innovation, these innovative uh, products, innovative uh, ideas, and that's why starting from the first day we announced the healing solution to find what are the uh, electronic or new products which can solve tomorrow our travel and to can make our travel more safer and uh, more guaranteed to don't export or import again virus let me ask you to so, uh, to I connect are, are yes Canary, one of the first pilot project which we want to establish and to support canary island because canary island uh, the 80 percent of economy of canary island depends on tourism industry and um, Canary Island was one of the less affected uh, part of Spain by virus, and that's why we are going to start immediately and activate, uh, starting from July, direct flights. And this is one of the part of uh, way of traveling there without risk. Of course, the second part, which is very important, and many countries and destinations are uh, discussing its test, to do test on arrival, to, to do test before uh, departure, uh, these are components which can together sum, sum up our future travel to become more safer and more guaranteed. But again, it's very difficult someone to say that this is 100% guaranteed. These are components, these are tools uh, which many countries and many destinations are thinking, many governments they are thinking. There are different uh, ideas, different approaches. But our role is uh, coordination. Uh, you know, uh, Minister, that we always, starting from very beginning and today, are uh, recommended to make decisions harmonized, to have one standard rule, to don't mix and to don't uh, confuse the tourists who are traveling from Sao Paulo to Paris or from Sao Paulo to London or to, from Sao, Sao Paulo to New York. Uh, and to don't have the different ways of travel. This is very important and that's why our role is to coordinate uh, between member states, between destinations, between ministries and to establish one rule and that's why we establish these guidelines, these procedures, these recommendations and that's why it's very important to execute them and to implement them um, in a very short period. Let me ask you a, a, a question that I'm sure most people that are watching us are interested because everybody loves Europe, everybody loves Spain. Spain is a, a huge uh, tourism destination. Uh, two things. One is uh, concerning summer vacation in Europe, whether people are going to be traveling inside Europe and the, if Europe is expecting people from abroad to arrive in, in Spain or in France or Italy uh, the uh, usual tourist destinations for summer. And the other question uh, is concerning after summer, uh, school year. What's going to be school year in the European continent? Uh, I think people also might be curious about those two things. You're located in Madrid, so I'm asking you as a, as a citizen, as, all, as well as the President uh, and the Secretary General of the UNWTO. Thank you. Uh, Europe, 
wasn't was before of, of course before pandemic one of the most visited uh, region in the world and Europe received more than uh, 700 million tourists um, and I'm sure that Europe will be one of the pioneer to show the world to open the tourism sector and open uh, up uh, after this pandemic. It's not easy, it's difficult. Uh, Europe was one of the first region affected by virus, but in, uh, less uh, ready to, to receive and to uh, feel this crisis and uh, uh, but it's uh, recover very fast maybe two months it's not so fast but I'm sure that the results might be much more difficult and much more heavy and hard and uh, I'm sure that uh, Europe will be one of the best example how to recover and that's why I want when I'm talking about experience of Europe to use for Americas uh, how we came back to the normal situation we are still again locked but I'm sure, and uh, as we see, many borders are going to open. European Union stands very close to each other, and countries, they want to open in June. Uh, many things is happening, and we want to export this uh, knowledge and experience to other continents and other regions. Uh, schools will open in September. Let's see. Again, uh, health is the most important thing, but I'm very, uh, very optimistic, and I'm sure that... Uh, we will start receiving tourists in in uh, uh, Europe, in Madrid, in Spain, and uh, we will come to the normal life. Oh. Okay, thank you. Um, I think we are moving uh, towards a new phase here, which is uh, questions, uh, soon questions from, from people around Brazil and around the world. Uh, which I'll be uh, directing to you. But before that, I would just like to make a brief comment on what we are doing in Sao Paulo. Uh, uh, since uh, Mr. Paul Olikashvili mentioned the experience in Europe, uh, Sao Paulo is following exactly the same pattern uh, of the European countries. Uh, there's a, a commission of the 18 best infectologists, uh, the best uh, people in Brazilian and Sao Paulo's medicine, uh, directing the efforts uh, and we have uh, the best economists uh, working together with the phasing of the opening of the economy to be uh, worked out perfectly with the levels of uh, the capacity of uh, health and, uh, and the health service to comply. Uh, and that hopefully will work out in Sao Paulo and many other states in Brazil and all together for the country. Now, I would like to direct you questions. There's uh, Senhor Milton Ribeiro Craveiro Jr. Uh, it's uh, a question to Mr. Zura. Uh, uh, whether and when we are going to see the new normal working out between Brazil and Europe. As, as you notice from behind this question is a great love for, for, from Brazilians uh, towards Europe. And it seems like, uh, in a way, in Latin America, because of this connection with Europe, uh, uh, dear friends, Europe, uh, we are disconnected. Uh, I, I have the feeling that uh, what uh, Mr. Uh, Craveiro is saying is that when we are going to back, be connected again, traveling between Europe uh, normally, within the new normal, but normally. When do you expect that to answer back to our fellow they, Brazilians? Be sure that we will be always connected. Uh, uh, and this is a very good example. Uh, it's very difficult to say today when Europe will connect to Brazil. First of all, of course, we need to stabilize and to normalize the life in uh, in brazil i'm sure that uh, with support of brazilian government uh, with president himself with ministers who are doing quite hard and very important uh, support for health and for tourism again we are on daily basis in contact with uh, with the minister marcelo alvaro and with 
with you and uh, I, I really believe that it will happen very soon. It will happen in two, three, four months. Again, honestly, it's, there is no one who can tell exact date when the international flights from Europe to Brazil will start. But I really uh, uh, wish and will love to have an I will be the first who will come to Brazil and I will be the first who will come back to agenda we plan together and we wanted to reactivate Brazil like a old and new destination with its culture, with its people, with its uh, uh, nature to make it one of the most attractive destination in region and in the world. So I'm very positive again. Let's wait. Let's see. I'm sure that uh, all measures made by government will make better situation, the numbers will decrease, and uh, then we can travel and Brazil will be one of the most important country Nós estamos com problema de som novamente. Uh, que... Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Um, we, I didn't for I didn't for I didn't for one minute. But I'm sure and I'm very uh, positive. And let's see the measures what the Brazilian government is making. It will make happen very soon, and uh, soon we can come back. And I will be one of the first who will travel and to support Brazilian government, uh, Brazilian private sector in tourism to Brazil became and become one of the most important and attractive uh, destination with its people, with its culture and with its nature and with, with its hospitality. Well, I'll take the, uh, the advantage of uh, you mentioning that you, you wish to... I will to... come to Sao Paulo, of course. Okay, you come to Sao Paulo. I'll invite Marcelo Alvaro, who's a good friend of mine and a good partner and his team. Uh, and also, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Wang for our polytourism uh, project in Sao Paulo. We are putting together um, a, a, a technology and tourism hub in Sao Paulo, which is very, very wide and large. Uh, uh, it's going to be uh, one of the, uh, I think, uh, the highest investment in such a project in the world. Uh, with partnerships with, with private companies, and it's been approved by our state assembly uh, in the next few months. And we have the partnership of Mr. Zurab, his leadership, and his uh, his technology project, which I don't remember the name now. Uh, it's uh, I was in Madrid. I can hear him again. Sound. We don't have the sound again, of Mr. Zurab. No. No, no thing so. Well, anyway, so um, as soon as we get the, the sound back, okay, you need to open the sound, turn on the sound on your, in a, in a translator or in a new computer in the Zoom, you have to turn on your, to English. No, no, it's okay. Uh, I, okay. think, I think you, you can hear me now. Okay, yes. you were in. The name of this uh, competition was Healing Solution. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. since we are together in this project uh, with Polytourism, uh, we're putting together technology, tourism, and all the sectors alongside the privatization of the zoo and the Botanical Garden of Sao Paulo, which is the largest green area of uh, the 22 million people region of uh, Sao Paulo uh, metropoli. So it's going to be, so I'm selling out the project here also to Hong Kong because we have the <laughs> blessing of uh, Mr. Zurab and the uh, UNWTO. And perhaps we also could do a good connection with uh, the Hong Kong Polytechnic and have the invitation here also handed out to, to Mrs. Wang when, uh, to meet us in Sao Paulo when uh, Mr. Zurab Pololikashvili will be here and with the Brazilian Ministry and our partners of surrounding states. Um, there's a question here for uh, 
Dr. Wang, which is how can we um, potentialize, make it grow, uh, is about tourism between Brazil and China. Far away countries. Uh, do you have any ideas? Oh, I, I forgot to say, this is Bruno Omori. I'm sorry about that. This is Bruno Omori uh, from Sao Paulo, the former president of our hotel uh, association of the state of Sao Paulo. Yeah, the distance makes the beauty, I would say. Um, I mean, uh, in uh, Brazil, right, you have such different culture from China and also the scenery, the people. So, you know, you understand nowadays uh, Chinese travelers are looking for uh, the different kind of uh, uh, learning opportunities uh, to appreciate different culture uh, in the world. So for sure, people have motivation to travel internationally, particularly to South America, to Brazil. Uh, but as I just mentioned that probably in the COVID-19 context, uh, long haul international travel is the last thing to come back. Uh, because as uh, we, 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 we understand that as just Mr. Durap also mentioned, like um, UNWTO are coordinating different kind of governments. Okay, we need lots of international collaboration. We need the, uh, uh, the, the trust to be restored in the international community. So, uh, but I'm sure like as long as the things, uh, um, the first thing, for example, we get vaccine, uh, the most ideal situation, uh, or actually uh, when the countries, they open the border, uh, and the people have the confidence to travel, then I think all the commercial activities, uh, leisure market will rebound very quickly. Thank you. All right, now let me to, to, yes. to add one comment, if I, if I may. Please. Uh, last October, I had the honor to participate. I think it was one of the very first uh, uh, event hosted by again Macau government, where Argentinian minister and Brazilian minister they visited officially uh, Hong Kong and Macau, uh, and uh, it was first uh, first communication before Miss Pansiho, who is our ambassador, she visited with a very uh, high level delegation Brazil and Argentina, and this was first uh, bridge, let's say, between two continents between two big countries and that was very successful first step to support tourism from China and especially from Hong Kong and from Macau to Brazil and uh, Latin America and uh, we supported as I mentioned I attended this very important event and uh, this was again historical first step how to approach uh, two big economies two big uh, because when, when we're talking about tourism, we're talking about the investments. We're talking about new, new business models. We, we are talking about new business opportunities. And that's why it was very important. And I'm sure that this uh, event will have continuation and dynamic uh, follow-ups. Unfortunately, uh, again, COVID affects all the world, but we will recover very fast and we will be back to Hong Kong, to Sao Paulo, to Rio, and uh, to Madrid, you always are welcome. And uh, we will continue very interesting projects. And again, I will be back to Sao Paulo because we have to establish this convention center, which will be the biggest hub for innovation, for entrepreneurs, for young generation, because Brazil has a very huge capacity of talent and we have to support them, we have to support to internationalize these projects, and that's, this is our role. And I'm sure that China and Hong Kong, especially Polytechnical University, I see the, the, the building of your university I visited, it's the, one of the best examples in the world how to manage and how to teach uh, tourism uh, for new generation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Giraffe. We're all looking forward to the day to travel. We'll be together in Sao Paulo very soon. Uh, yes. uh, I would like also uh, to make a, a small comment here in paying homage to a good friend of ours, 
ex-minister of tourism, alongside with me, Gustavo Santos, who was minister then, and me, minister from Brazil, when we signed the agreement with Panzi Ho in Argentina, in Buenos Aires, at WTTC. So that's why I followed. Exactly. Uh, I was there also with you. You were there. We were together. We had the G20 meeting. T20 ministerial meeting, yeah. Exactly. And but it was Gustavo that was was saying all the time, uh, and to answer this question, that long haul travel justifies Brazil and Argentina working together. So what we did the year before, we took Foz do Iguaçu for a tour around China to show Foz do Iguaçu because this is uh, one of the seven wonders in the world, and it's both Argentinian and Brazilian. Uh, and also Paraguayan to an extent. You know, it, it's, uh, it's the three countries, the, the, the triple frontier. Dear, dear Vinicius, maybe you don't know, but uh, this, uh, this year we will celebrate at Iguazu Falls World Tourism Day with Brazilian government, with Argentinian government, and with Paraguayan government. Well, well, I did... Mercosur, uh, the Uruguay will be also there, but this will happen in Iguazu, I'm sure. So if you invite us, we'll go there. But two years ago... It was, it was by the way, Gustavo's initiative. Oh, you know but Gustavo is always creating problems. Uh, <laughs> exactly. But I, we had also a, 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 a very beautiful initiative of the, uh, the Red Lantern Festival of China in Iguazu yeah. two years ago, which was very beautiful, yeah, yeah. also part of this effort. So it takes long, uh, but if we are steady... Uh, uh, we, we will be uh, going on with results. Uh, it seems to me that our time is, is uh, fading away, is withering. Uh, I have a few questions more, but I don't think I have the time. Uh, I, would, I need to organize myself here. How long do I have still uh, in this? Uh, so we would listen again in the end, uh, both our invitees. Um, but also, so before that, I would like, okay, we have still some time. So uh, I'll do another question here. Uh, it's addressed to me, but I, I think uh, I should be readdressing to both our, our, our uh, guests today. Who are the best respondents? <laughs> well, you know, they're asking me what are the, the, protocol, the international pro protocols for big events around the world. Now, we are studying this here in the government because we have three international consultancy companies working in Sao Paulo right now. Uh, and the University of Sao Paulo bringing all the examples. But since you are on the front lines uh, of the world tourism, Mr. Uh, mm -hmm. Paulo Lukashville and Dr. Wang in, 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 in the Far East, I think it would be a better opportunity if I address these questions to both of you because it is a tough question, very difficult question uh, to answer because uh, it means public gathering and uh, it's, a, it's a complex issue. Uh, we are right now here at a, at, a, at, a, at, a, at a big venue in Sao Paulo, the World Trade Center, uh, and there are no big events going on right now here. It's uh, sad enough. So uh, I'll readdress to Dr. Wang and then to, to the, our friend Zureb the, the question of the protocols for the large events. Um, you know what? Uh, <clears throat> the Hong Kong Tourism Bureau made a prediction. Um, they predict, based on their research, of course, uh, it's based on some statistics and uh, surveys, and um, they predict that the event and exhibition market will will we, we, rebound back the first, will be the first market to recover. Uh, because uh, we are human beings, although you, you just mentioned that uh, in the past several months, people may already get used to the virtual meetings, but meanwhile, people get tired of that. And we're, we're human beings, so we like to talk about business, we like to get the deal closed, but at uh, the same time, we want social. We want some fun. So we want to have a, a deep and a emotional human uh, contact. So uh, when things uh, settled, I, I, I think the event and or exhibitions will, and conventions will be organized. But the thing is, yes, right, what uh, we can set up a protocol there to uh, 
you know, ensure the, 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 the safety and hygiene issues. So, uh, I mean, there is no uh, current example in my mind of what the exhibition industry are doing, but uh, um, I observed that hotel industry are doing uh, something very good, uh, proactive measures. Um, many hotels, uh, because now it's a good time for hotel to uh, reflect up on their hygiene or cleanliness. Uh, standard, right? Uh, so they basically need a holistic approach to redesign many of their protocols. For example, I read news that Marriott International Company, um, Marriott, they already established a, a kind of the cleanliness inspection. Uh, a clean, uh, they call it a Marriott Global Cleanliness Council uh, to uh, work together with the uh, food scientists. Uh, with uh, cleaning companies, uh, consultancy companies, to uh, reset their protocols in terms of uh, hygiene standard um, and cleanliness uh, protocols um, in different hotels. So uh, I, I think it's going to be uh, a collaborative action uh, to establish such industry-wide uh, protocol or standard. Uh, can you uh, comment on that, uh, dear Zurab? Today, today there is no. I know that you, you, you like me. You like football. There is no football. There is no concerts. There is no uh, international affairs. Uh, everything changed, but I'm sure that everything will become to the normal life very soon. Once the connectivity and international flights will start, people, as uh, Dr. Da uh, mentioned. We all are so boring with these uh, teleconferences and <laughs> video conferences. And honestly, I miss you. And I want to see my friends, uh, to visit them. And they want to come. And um, again, tourism is about people and about friendship and about um, friendship again. So I'm sure that it will come very soon and we will celebrate. And I, I want to promise and let's do and let's make one of the most important and big event in Brazil, in Sao Paulo, because uh, Brazil needs support from um, UNWTO, from us. And again, our plan always was and will be to put Brazil like a make destination in Americas, uh, because it has enormous potential, enormous opportunities, not only uh, traveling wise, uh, we always mention investments and uh, with support of government, with support of uh, His Excellency President, Minister, you, I know that you are working like one team and it depends a lot on people, how they see it, uh, uh, on their leadership and I'm sure that we can make it happen. If, if we can do it, who, who can make, make it, I, I don't know, and we help all forces and all instruments and all support to help Brazil a leader destination and nice, safe and important place to invest. To invest in education, to invest in innovation. There are lots of opportunities and let's use it and let's stand to each other and we're, I'm sure that we can make it uh, very successful and uh, really nice showcase and nice example to other member states. Then we have, from other hands, our Chinese friends, our Chinese partners, and again, back to Polytechnical University. It's the, the best example, and we can e export, and we talk many times, Vinicius, with you, uh, that there are lots of nice showcases, and we wanted to bring it to Sao Paulo, to bring it to, it to Convention Center, and uh, this was excellent idea, and I'm sure that very soon we will come back, and we will uh, open it together, if I may, with you, and uh, we will be very honest, and we announced it already during FITUR, that UNWTO will be a small part of this very big and very important project for world tourism. Instead of asking you a question, I'm going to ask you uh, both for a comment uh, on top of what you just said and a conversation I had with Dr. Wang before uh, we started uh, the mission. Um, we are in Brazil going through a lot of reforms lately. Uh, we have the labor reform, we have the pension fund reform, and we need a lot 
more reforms, reforms in order to um, increase productivity. Uh, productivity is a problem for many developing nations. It means uh, what a country produces divided per capita by the number of people. And that is normally systematic. It's not only individual. It's not inside the company. It's inside the company, but it's, um, it's uh, throughout the system of distribution, throughout the bureaucracy, the red tape, yep. and the cost of transaction, which is a problem in many developing countries. Now, one of the issues that uh, rises in tourism uh, concerns investment, and I want to pose this questions for you to comment because there are not only the reforms which are the uh, major and, and macro reforms, but the, the reforms in, in tourism, in our, uh, in our uh, environment, uh, the, our business environment. And our, the Brazil's qualification in the business environment for tourism investment is not at the top. It's rather at the bottom. Uh, and for what? For natural parks, for theme parks, for marinas and tourism ports, uh, for even more complex issues such as, um, uh, such as uh, integrated resorts with casinos such as Sands, uh, the, 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 the Singapore resort, which is one very big powerhouse for tourism. Um, and trying to uh, put the question to you, what are these levels of maturity concerning the appropriation of the experiences of others in benefit of the newcomers in tourism? What is wrong that people take so long to learn how really you know, natural parks should be run, how theme parks should be uh, dealt with, how uh, this mysterious complexity of red tape surrounding tourism in many countries in the world hinders economic development. And how uh, the academia, uh, and I'm talking to Dr. Wang, and then later uh, to uh, Mr. Zurab, how can we help each other? And, and I, I sensed that question when I heard uh, the President, uh, the Secretary General of UNWTO saying, we are going to bring the showcases. I think we have to make it simpler, uh, the, this communication, uh, about very simple issues, uh, how to go about uh, uh, creating the conditions for these investments to help uh, happen and to be uh, helped, um, if not by um, uh, external investment, but even by, uh, by uh, uh, internal Welcome. savings, which are common but are not directed. So I put that question to Dr. Wang and then to, to our friend Zurab, uh, Paul Olikashivili. Call me Zurab because it's easier now. Okay, uh, I'm proud that, <laughs> I'm very proud that I can say your name. Not everybody can say that. <laughs> Dr. Wang, can you hear me? Oh yes, I can hear you. Okay, I put you in a, uh, in a, in a tight spot here. Tell us how you do in China, that everything flourished so fast and every, uh, everybody else has to take so long. We want to do it fast and well. Can we do that? Uh, this is a very good but challenging question. <laughs> uh, yes and no. Uh, yeah, if we put this in the context of destination redevelopment, uh, right. So, uh, as we said, like uh, now, actually, the COVID nineteen provide uh, a chance for us to pause uh, and uh, to think, do some reflections, and uh, do more efforts, and to come better with, in a better shape. Um, yeah, as you said, like there is no model to copy actually because the resources in different kind of destinations. Um, are unique. Uh, and the social, economic, political environment in different destinations are unique. So there's no model to copy. Um, but uh, there are lots of tools uh, and uh, 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 um, uh, technologies to be deployed to support the destination redevelopment. Um, and because, for example, the national parks in Brazil cannot copy the model 
from the, those uh, national parks in the United States. Um, and the theme parks in, in, in Brazil cannot, uh, you know, uh, be different, must be different from the theme parks in, in Hong Kong. So um, the thing is that uh, how actually we, we can have a think tank, for example, to get it started uh, to uh, develop some models or frameworks uh, would include all kind of uh, stakeholders to work together to figure out a, a sustainable solution um, or a more efficient solution. Thank you. Uh, Zura, please, can you, uh, you mentioned, you comment? You mentioned Vinicius' very nice example, which is uh, Singapore, I think. What Singapore done? Uh, first of all, they decreased the number of uh, bureaucratic steps. Talking about investments and talking about uh, easy doing business. And I think this is Brazil need, needs. It's not easy in big countries, I know. But I know that Sao Paulo, uh, they made some uh, several measures to facilitate uh, and to attract uh, investors and private sector to be more, and to Sao Paulo to be more uh, attractive place for investments and to, to do business. Especially tourism. Tourism is future of Brazil. There is a huge opportunity. I think uh, one of the first step government has to do is to invest in infrastructure. And I know that you are doing a lot of things. Again, we are talking about another continent. Brazil is an uh, enormous big uh, country with, with diverse uh, nature. But uh, to facilitate the procedures, bureaucratic uh, uh, steps to attract investors, to subsidize, I wouldn't say subsidize, but to make some incentives for them. This is the formula and this is the uh, uh, points, I think, Brazilian uh, federal uh, governments, they have to uh, support investors. And again, tourism is very beneficiary uh, and very attractive sector. And with your people, with your culture, with your gastronomy, by the way, Sao Paulo is one of the most attractive gastronomy center in the world, having uh, such divers. I've never been, by the way, but I've heard a lot. Uh, it's always in the top ranking worldwide. It has uh, a lot of opportunities, and uh, this balance can make uh, country, and of course, education. Without trained and educate uh, staff and people, it's impossible to make it happen. It's impossible to make it successful and i'm sure that these are ideas we wanted to import and to establish in uh, your project which was this convention center thank you i would like to uh, uh, take advantage of uh, what you just said that we are commemorating this week uh, a privatization project in sao paulo of three billion dollars of uh, a road east west of sao paulo right in the middle of COVID. so i think we are fighting hard to, to build a business environment, to invite people uh, uh, around the world. And I would like to remind that during most years uh, of the last 10 years, if not all the years, uh, Brazil was considered by the World Economic Forum to be uh, the largest natural potential for tourism around the world. And I think- Don't uh, forget the medical tourism. Do you remember, uh, Vinicius, we talked about to position to position Sao Paulo and Sao Paulo in that, that case, like a um, medical and health healthy destination, this is another very important uh, uh, part and topic for Americas. Americas need more hospitals, not hospitals like uh, public ones, but more medical um, uh, treatments and more medical tourism, let's say. And uh, I'm, I'm absolutely uh, align with your policy that uh, Sao Paulo can be another very attractive place for health care and for health tourism. Well, I'll, I'll take the advantage of your, of your position and uh, we'll register on the national press, if I may, that you, this is your suggestion, which we agree, but there's red tape in Brazil concerning uh, advertising internationally or even nationally uh, health services. Now, this is a, 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 an issue that is an ethical issue, but it's also an, an issue that many countries have solved, especially the United States, Switzerland, and Germany. 
So we are registering this, and if you may allow me, you know, we will put this in the national press that your position, alongside with ours, is to discuss the matter. Not to say we have to, but we say we should discuss Even it. I will tell you more. We have concrete investors who are in, in, interested to invest in America's in hospital sector, and uh, we will support them. And let's think about to make this first event, as we mentioned it before, oriented on uh, investments, education, and innovation. These are three topics where we have to stress and focus more. And I'm sure that with the friends, with the professionals, with experienced people like you are, and I want to congratulate your 60th anniversary, <laughs> by the way, which was three days Don't ago. Tell me. And wish you all the best. Health to your family, to all Brazil, all people from Sao Paulo and from Brazil. And uh, always count on our full support. Okay, uh, uh, I would let also uh, final comments for Dr. Wang and then back to you and I'll take back. Not without uh, thanking you for your kindness and saying also visit Brazil, but visit Georgia. Visit Georgia, which is our Zurab's country, uh, uh, our friend's Zurab's country. My uh, dream is to host you in my country. <laughs> visit Georgia as well. Uh, Looking we, forward. Very good gastronomy, which I've tried not in, in, in Georgia, but I've tried in, in Moscow and St. Petersburg. In Russia. In Russia. <laughs> there is their favorite gastronomy. Thank you. Uh, and also, I'm from Santa Catarina, so I'd like to mention to you, the state of Santa Catarina has the only Bolshoi school outside Moscow mm -hmm. it, and has uh, achieved uh, to have lead dancers in the Moscow Ballet from from Brazil and from 20 different states in the country that mm. arrived and achieved at, to the pinnacle of international, the international, well, the, the art of dancing uh, at its utmost. So I also make you a point for your nationality and also a comment for my uh, original state and, and uh, to thank also Sao Paulo for and Governor Doria to having me here uh, alongside with his very strong secretariat, almost to the level of a ministry. Very strong uh, state of Sao Paulo. Uh, so I'd like to go back very briefly to Dr. Wong uh, to, before uh, we finish this emission. Hope to see her back in Sao Paulo when Zurab comes. We put it all together and you come to our project of Politurismo. Um, and uh, hear your final words very briefly and then Zurab and then we are all set to uh, be happy that we have a very beautiful conference today. So, Dr. Wang. Thank you. All right. Um, yeah, thank you so much. I would also take this opportunity to invite both of you uh, as soon as possible to come to visit the building behind me. Uh, it's our hotel icon, uh, the five-star teaching and commercial hotel in Hong Kong. And so, yeah, final word uh, to conclude this uh, um, interesting discussion. Uh, we would say, uh, like, stay strong and be confident. Uh, people uh, will travel, and uh, although in a different way, uh, probably uh, they are expecting for the touch list and a seamless travel experience. So uh, be think positively and proactively get prepared for the next uh, new generation of travelers. Thank you, Dr. Wang. Dear friend Zurab. So again, to wish uh, all Brazilians health, first of all, we really stand, stand uh, next and close to Brazilian people in these very hard times. I'm sure that it will finish very soon and uh, we will come back to Brazil. We, we are talking about big events and uh, one of the biggest events I will and we will together uh, visit will be GTF, the Global Tourism Economic Forum in Macau again, which is one of the most attractive and it will be, if I, I, I remember well, it's eighth or ninth edition. Um, and uh, as Dr. Wang mentioned, we have to be closer. The people never been so close like we are now. And uh, I'm sure that this is opportunity for, for future, for tomorrow. Tomorrow looks good. Tomorrow looks good means that we will travel soon to Brazil, to Sao Paulo, to Hong Kong. And this friendship 
will give us more projects, more interesting conversations, uh, meetings, and I'm sure that this uh, hard period show us that we are friends, first of all, we are together and uh, we can make interesting things happen. I'm so honored and so pleased to participate in this project, in this conference, very interesting one. Uh, I want to wish the same to Dr. Wang, to all Poly University, and uh, let's continue and let's see each other soon. Well, thank you, Zurb. Uh, we are finishing here. Um, we are here at the WTC, the Sheraton in uh, Sao Paulo, to whom I thank you, uh, to thank uh, uh, Fernando here and his crew and my team from the CETUR, Secretaria de Turismo do Estado de São Paulo. Muito obrigado a todos, foi um prazer, uma alegria Muito estarmos obrigado. juntos. Foi a primeira emissão, Zura, a primeira emissão, uh, Dr. Wang, e a toda a equipe aqui, comandada pela Gisele, que está segurando a, o cartel, a cartela, toda a equipe aqui de parceiros, uh, a assessoria de comunicação da CETUR, aqui presentes o, o Tiago, o Salles, a todos os presentes, ao Patrick, muito obrigado, e nos vemos logo, pós-Covid, mais felizes, com mais turismo. Um abraço a todos. Abraços. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.